Hello and welcome back to the channel. I hope you have set up your Neo 4J on your Windows PC. So that we have seen in the previous lecture. So this lecture is all about Cypher Fundamental and how we can write a query to fetch the data from the Neo 4J database. So without further any ado, let's get into it. Okay, so before jumping on to writing queries, we need to first understand what exactly is Cypher and why we are using Cypher query language instead of any other programming language like SQL. So let's discuss that now. We already know that a property graph model which is leveraged by Neo4j database is comprised of different kinds of nodes and relationship. And we will be also having some properties so we can relate it to as a key value pairs of data in our nodes or it can also be present in the relationship to add more context into your graph. So this may sound simple. So this simple combination of nodes and relationship really makes the powerful property graph model. And if we talk about the patterns, patterns are nothing but the combination of these nodes and relationship which can represent simple as well as the complex graph traversals or the paths that we are going to see in the next lecture. So pattern recognition is like the fundamental of how our brain works. Our brain likes the visual data. It's like for example visual diagrams or any memory matching game. So Cypher is also based on these patterns and finding the simple or complex patterns inside your data. So this will make Cypher a very simple and logical language to learn for every developer. So if we talk about the Cypher syntax as you can see here, Cypher is like designed to be very human readable. So its construct is like based on English prose as well as the iconography. So we can easily convert any data, any notes and relationships into the Cypher query because its syntax will be similar to how we see that in our actual graph and it makes this syntax very visually and easily understandable. So let's talk about it with some simple example. So as you can see here, we got a very simple graph in which we have the person node, company and the technology node and we also have different properties which is name in the person node as well as in company as well as in the technology we have the property as a type and we have the relationships between all these nodes. So as you can see we can easily convert this graph into like a readable English phrases. So as you can see we can say it as this Jennifer person likes graph. So graph is nothing but a technology and we have the likes relationship between these two nodes. As well as we can say it as Jennifer is friends with this person which is another person which is Michael and also Jennifer works for Neo4j. So we have converted this graph into the English phrases. So the next step would be we want to convert it into the cipher and we are going to see it in the further lectures where we will see what is like a cipher keywords and how we can convert this graph into a cipher query language to fetch different patterns using your data. So as we already know that the nodes and relationships are the fundamental components of every property graph model. So as you can see here how we can represent nodes in the cipher. So it is very simple. If we talk about the previous examples only, we had like the four nodes as well as relationships present. So as you can see, we got the four nodes here. So nodes are nothing but which represents the data entity in your graph. And you can identify the nodes in your graph using the nouns or objects. So as you can see, we got the two person which are named Michael as well as Jennifer respectively. And we also have like the company and technology entities which represents the Neo4j node as well as the graph node which is the type of technology. So this is how you can represent nodes using the cipher query language. So to sum it up in our graph Michael, Neo4j, Jennifer as well as the graph are nothing but the nodes in our knowledge graph. So as you can see for representing these nodes in the cipher query we have to surround the node using the parenthesis. So as you can see in the round brackets we will represent our nodes. So now let's talk about the variables and the node labels. So if you want to later refer our node in the cipher query we can give it a variable which is like a similar to other programming language like python and you can represent the variable inside the parenthesis itself. So for person you can mention like P or T for T 
thing but this could be readable in the real world because if your queries are a bit complex and you have like a bigger queries then putting a readable name like for person you can directly call your variable like a person so that will be more readable than just providing p so this is like a simple tip to write cipher queries so you can refer that node in the subsequent commands in your cipher queries that is very simple and if we talk about the node labels so if you remember from the property graph model we can also group our nodes in the labels so let's say an example of like a movie graph so in the movie data set we will be having different kinds of nodes so some nodes will have like a information about the movies so we can provide a movie label and group all those nodes together similarly we can have like the nodes which represent different properties belongs to some actor so if the keanu reeves is like a node in our graph that belongs to the actor label and similar goes to the director as well as the person who watched the movies as well as the ratings and so on this could be anything so if you want like you can have like different labels in your graph so those could make sense as well so in the movie recommendation system having all these nodes would really make sense and you can group that together so a person could be like a actor or a director so you can apply multiple labels to that node and group them together so if we compare it to the relational databases node labels are just like the table names so if you have in the movie data set in rdbms you will be having like a movie table then you will be having the actor table so to group all those relevant records together similar concept applies to the neo4j also in which we will be having different kinds of labels so that to group your relevant data together okay so now we will talk about the relationships in cipher and how we can represent it in a cipher query so to add more connection and richness to our graph we will introduce relationships in our graph so earlier we only had the nodes in our graph but those are not related to each other so in this case we have brought the different relationships and it has a certain direction in our graph so as you can see we got the likes is friends with and the works for relationships so these are like the different relationship types in our graph so this also should be readable because at the end of the day our graph should relate to the english phrases because it is represented as a simple english language so as you can see here everyone should be able to read that graph because we have brought like the person label so we already know that this particular person for example jennifer will likes some neo 4j technology so the there is a relationship going from the person to the technology so as you can see we can relate our relationships and this makes our graph more connected and also it increases the performance while traversing through the complex patterns in our data and similar to the nodes as well we can have like different variables for our relationships so we can have assign like l variable to the likes relationship then if variable to the is friends relationship and w variable for the works for relationship it totally depends on you and you can refer them in our sub subsequent steps in your cipher query so this is very helpful and it is like similar to the other programming language so once we jump in to writing our first cipher queries then you will understand how we can utilize these variables so so far we have talked about the most fundamental components of our property knowledge graph which is a nodes and relationship but the last piece of this is the relationship or a nodes properties that we are going to see now so as you can see these properties are nothing but a key value pairs which will provide more details and the additional data in our nodes as well as the relationships so as i already told you that properties could be also in the nodes as well as in the relationship so as you can see to represent this in the cipher we are using the curly braces in our nodes or the relationships so you already know that the node is represented between the parentheses and i forgot to told you that the relationship is represented in the square brackets so you have to remember that that is like a fundamentals of cipher 
So as you can see, to represent any property which is in the node, we can directly give it in the parenthesis of nodes. So as you can see, we got the person node here in the parenthesis and we have the curly brackets in which we have the key value pair. So the key will be like the name for person and like the property value, which is like a Jennifer. So it representing a person who has the property name as Jennifer, but we also given a variable to our node, which is P. So to refer this person in the subsequent steps of your cipher query, you can directly give it as P. So assigning variable is very important to use that node in the further steps like the where condition to filter out your nodes. That is very important. And similarly, to represent the property in your relationship as a relationship property. So if you have like is friends with and in this relationship, we have like a different property. So since 2018. So which means that some person is friends with since 2018 to another person. That is very simple English language and everyone can like read that using this. So as you can see, we got the relationship is friends with in the square brackets and we have the directions as well. So we can represent this using the arrows. So as you can see, we got the since key and the 2018 value in the curly braces and we have the REL rel which represent this relationship and rel is a assigned variable for our relationship. So this is how you can represent relationship or the node properties in your cipher query. So, so far we have learned what is node, what are like relationships and how we can represent them in the cipher query as well as we have seen like how we can represent different nodes and relationship properties in your cipher. So the next lecture will be we need to discuss the cipher keywords which are like very important like the select clause, where clause, there are different cipher keywords present in Neo4j. So to learn that you need to first understand the basic fundamentals of the cipher. So in the next lecture, we will talk about and jump on to writing the cipher queries from the beginner level to the advanced level. And we will see all the syntax and like the different keywords as well as like the complex stuff like loops as well as sub queries and all that stuff in the subsequent lecture. So stay tuned and subscribe to the channel. And if you have any difficulties, you can let me know in the comments and we can discuss further on it. Thank you for watching this video.